interested in understanding how treasure operations go from transactional to strategic, welcome to Currency Cast. My name is Augustine McKinley. I'm the senior financial writer at Cantox and your host. Today we have the pleasure of, of receiving and introducing Francisco de Barros, assistant treasurer at Ingalls All Rand. So, Francisco, a very warm welcome to you and thank you for joining us today on Currency Cast. No, Augustine, thanks, thanks for bring, bringing me on. I'm uh, very excited to talk about those topics, which are always near and dear to my heart. So, happy to be here. All right. Look, Francisco, can you um, introduce yourself, please? Yeah, it's uh, Francis de Barros. I'm the assistant treasurer at the Ingles Rand, right? I have been treasury uh, for over 15 years now. Um, spent through a few different companies and industries. Started my career with Tyco International uh, in the audit team. From there, migrated to treasury. Um, step outside of treasury for a little bit to get some of what they call business experience. I think you know, that allows uh, treasurers to be a better business partner. From there, I went to Abvi when Abvi was spinning off from Abbott. Um, and now back into the industrial space with Ingus Rand, where I have been for the past three years. All right. Now, uh, Francisco, what's the, the typical day of a, an assistant treasurer at a large multinational car, uh, company with, with um, presence and sales in, in more than 100 countries? I think that what I like best about treasure because no day is the same, right? Every day is a little bit different. I think the, the typical day, we're just trying to catch up what has happened overnight, if you will, right? We have a, a follow the sun model uh, from a cash management, from a currency risk management and capital markets perspective. So it's basically getting, getting up to speed what has happened or may have happened overnight that you may have missed. Um, looking at your morning cash position, make sure that no liquidity is there. And I'm sure we're going to talk about this a little bit as one of the key pieces um and then kind of blocking and tackling what you have for the day either be you know capital markets operational efficiencies uh currency management and also work with senior management to to how to improve treasure as a business partner right and to deliver the strategy of the company which mm -hmm. nowadays treasury is becoming uh, a big and bigger part of the strategic picture uh, for any company that's right we're going to discuss that now it sounds like a pretty busy day let's uh, start our, our our conversation by discussing the dollar strength. Now, at Cantos, we are reluctant to discuss currency markets really because we think exchange rates are unpredictable. But I saw the other day um, an analyst quoted by Bloomberg that says that the dollar, the strength of the dollar, might might cause some some problems to, in terms of your uh, your earnings. But I also went to your financial statements, and you say that that FX has roughly a one percent impact on on guidance uh for overall um o overall um uh, sales that seems to me pretty manageable is that right and how do you do it yeah i think so with the strategy of the company right i was seeing i think when you talk about effects you have you no know, for those folks that start there's two pieces right you have the transaction effects which the kind of try to manage right and you have the translation effects which is conversion of what we're into into the dollar of currency. For us, you no know, strategic decision was made long ago that we tried to build in country for the country, which is the nature of our business, which by itself can help us to reduce the transactional exposure, if you will. Right. Um, so that's, that's the biggest part of it. Um, and, and the second part um, is really kind of looking at your cash flows on those foreign currencies, right? And when you try to set guidance for the year, we have high expectations of kind of you know what to expect the currency will be given you know, on market trends and go back to my initial comment you no know, being updated on what the market is and making the projections from a strategic vision right so when we put that guidance out there we, we already expected the dollar to have the, the, the you know the the path that has been taken this year of course no one is ever 100 percent accurate but now we we have been able to somewhat closely resemble what you expect the trajectory to be and what's taking place right now i, I see that um just very recently both s p and fitch ratings upgraded your debt to to triple b minus and that's investment grade so my first reaction is congratulations um but Look, if you read the, the statement by Fitch Ratings, it says that they undertook that upgrade to your debt, among other reasons, because they say that there are in place at your company policies that contribute to a lower variability 
in free cash flow. Now that's uh, to us that's particularly um, so exciting and interesting. And of course the question is, um, so to what extent, if any, Francisco, does risk management and perhaps even foreign exchange risk management make a contribution towards uh, so towards a um, smoothing the path of of, uh, of free cash flow. Do you apply, for example, layered hedging programs? Yeah. So I mean, the the, the free cash flow program that really is, is really uh, the result of a much longer work that we started you no know, many many years ago, right? It, it really started with you no know, teaming up and partnering with the finance team. Uh, to look at business fundamentals, right? We have something in that English range we call the IDX, which is the operating model, where we meet on a quarterly basis uh, to discuss priorities for the for the for the quarter, right? And that's tracked monthly, right? So as senior management, the first thing that we did out there was what's the vision for English Red, right? And we wanted to be investment grade, right? We are a growth company that became very clear from discussions that we had with the banks and the investor community. Right, so having that foundation of where we are and what we want to be, right? The second, the second step was okay. How do we get to the top tier of our group? Right? Is it margin? Right? Growth, margin percentage, and kind of first piece was working capital. That's the first thing that kind of addressed from DSOs, DPOs, right? The liquidity piece of the corporation. Um, the second step was you no know, looking at our capital allocation model, which is a comment that the Fitch and SAP made, right? And they actually. The upgrade was more related to our refinancing, right, of that capital, um, of a capital structure, if you will. Um, Ingus Rand, when you look at it operationally, we have always been investment grade, but we had a leveraging event because of the merger between Ingus Rand and Garden Denver uh, that took a leverage up. Therefore, it got downgraded, right, and I just worked with the rating agents to help them to understand where we are and where we want to be. So part of it was that debt issuance, we kind of trans helped the transition of a secured capital structure to unsecured, right? And the comment that they're referring to was more like, it could be further upgrades, right? If we continue to do m and which is something that we kind of continue to do both on as senior management has stated, right? And the policies that, you know, help to reduce variability of cash flow. And that really is that in country for the country model that we discuss, Right, it is being laser focused on our working capital measures like DPO, DSO, which kind of track very closely, right? And Treasury kind of inserts itself into a strategic partnership to drive costs out from a bank fee perspective, from a finance perspective, and also help to support you no know, supplier chain finance programs. Um, you know, ensure collectability and the trade finance a big part for us. So it is a multi pronged approach that help us to to have the variability and then of course holding the team accountable for it right so we have guidance out for the quarter we are tracking on a weekly basis right and we make sure that everybody's leaning in and everybody's accountable for it so right. the process that is a work in progress that i expect to continue for many many years as we are we met had made great progress but we are not where we want to be yet right now but uh if um so if there is that contribution that finance can make in terms of again of, of of lowering the variability of free cash flow that's with that's at the very heart of issues like like a cost of capital like firm valuation so that's really really uh goes into what we said at the beginning right we go from purely uh, transactional to a lot more strategic is that right that, that's correct right and look at treasury obviously you have like three pillars right you have the cash management with the foundation right then you have the debt capital market with no with your debt and then you have what we call the corporate finance right and that's where kind of treasury i think is right kind of focus on and it's really like when we're doing m a right looking at you no know, the expect return for that m a was the cost of capital now does it make sense so we we're not just you no know, helping to fund but you're being active you no know, participant in the discussion you know, does it make sense Right, from a capital allocation perspective. And that's that comment they made about you no know, a, a disciplined capital allocation um, structure that we have. Right. All right. Now let's move on a little bit onto the subject of Francisco. Every single um, survey that I see here of, of, of about treasurers, of CFOs, puts uh, liquidity management, cash management at the forefront as the number one uh, priority. In, again, in every single survey, you see that, right? And of course, there's the old saying, cash is king. Now, 
a um, few months ago, right, as a tribute to the late queen of the UK, some people said, no, Cash is not king, Cash is queen. And the other day, we, we had a, a an interview with Patrick Koons, a, an interim treasurer in, in the Netherlands, says, no, Cash is not king, Cash is not queen, Cash is emperor. So <laughs> further, uh, so uh, putting forward the, the, the value of, of of cash management and yourself you wrote that you can mess up with anything but liquidity so tell us how do you go about and make making sure that at your company at ingles or rand you don't mess up with liquidity yeah i think that's a good question right because when you think about liquidity people think just about cash now cash is, is of course the first foundation of the structure right and i, I talk to my team that no cash is like electricity right you should switch on and it's there when you need it and then switch off when you don't need it what does that mean? that's a very powerful image i'm going to use it <laughs> yeah and what does that really mean right it means that no i may have a bunch of cash in the us right but when i need cash in europe and the cash is not there the cash in the us is no no use for me right um and how do i get that cash from the us to europe efficiently right so you have the pipeline or the electrical grid if you will to transfer that electricity you know in a in a nice and efficient efficient manner so I think that's the, that's the first way is make sure that you have that power grid in place. Um, and, and that you cannot mess up because you may miss up a big opportunity that will be costing card if you have to do overdrafts, right? Or if you don't have the liquidity. The second piece is that, no, if you need to transfer that cash from one jurisdiction to the other and you're going to have an FX, right? Because you don't have the right pipelines. That could be a, a cost, effective cost that you may lose on that hedge. It may be a swap cost to it. Right. Or maybe that no, that FX gain loss may hit your PL, which people that you don't like. What we don't like in finance is surprises. And then I see one of the main functions for the treasury is to avoid surprises. And surprise can be positive surprise or negative surprise when we talk about right. FX, right? Either one is bad, right? Because investors, if you're always surprising them in a positive manner, they become accustomed to it. And every time you put a guidance out, they're going to inflate that guidance, right? Or they're not going to trust your guidance because they think you're conservative. And if you're always under delivering, right, then you are not doing your job. Um, so I think liquidity is released to the ability to move the cash effectively and when needed. And also, right, to make sure that, no, you take out the variability of the earnings out by managing your effects, by making sure that you understand what's going on. And that that power grid, if you know what a power grid call it says, like electricity, if it's laid out well, it helps to avoid those surprises in the last minute. Uh, item that always come up, right? There's always an urgency. Someone either misforecast the cash or you no know, MA transaction came up. There's a good opportunity that you need to be able to, to fund it. Right. Now, um, you just said that that one of the ingredients here is is effect management. And if I come back a little bit to those surveys, first I really like them, but second, I, I tend to criticize them a little bit because they they tend to present the priorities of treasures and. And you, you, we have you as a treasurer, and you're going to to tell me if you agree with this. Uh, the priorities of treasurer as being neatly separated one from the other. So always say um, cash management at the top, then perhaps issues with uh, raising capital, and perhaps the um, investments in technology, and then comes foreign exchange rate management. But again, as if those issues were um, neatly separated from each other. I'm not sure that this is the practical view of, of a treasurer. Is that right, Francisco? That's correct. I mean, they're, they're not mutually exclusive, right? That's one piece. And also when you talk about cash management effects, they're going to be very different depends on the organization that you are, right? Every organization is a different maturity curve, right? Uh, some organization may have different type of effects, exposure challenges, right? Uh, or different, no challenge from a capital funding perspective, right? So we they tend to be generic, but no, do they provide a lot of insight? I agree with you. I'm not sure if they provide a lot of insight. And, and I think some time ago you may have seen. I wrote an article for Treasury today, where they're talking about the, the centralization or in-house bank, you know what, what have you, right? And everybody was talking about payments on behalf of and collections on behalf of. And, and, and my article was no, nobody talks about the problems with payments on behalf of, right? It, it, one size doesn't fit all, right? Even from a country perspective, from a systems perspective. 
So I think for those conversations to be more productive, right, we need to dive a bit deep, deeper, right, to be able to, to really add value and share the knowledge across the industry. Right, right. Now, um, let's um, bring this, the, the discussion a little bit to the topic of um, technology in treasury operations and as technology, again, as a way to, to move from that, that uh, transactional uh, view of treasury to a more strategic one. We recently created a, a an automated solution for exactly what what you mentioned, right? In-house FX, and um, that solution allows so um, make sure that that subsidiaries make internal trades, but only the uh, headquarters are allowed to actually operate in 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 foreign exchange um, derivatives. Um, and I was discussing with an engineer yesterday about about that solution, and he just stressed the 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 point of uh, the issue of traceability, being able to to trace back so all the way from an in, say an internal trade by a subsidiary to the execution of the actual um, hedge with a with a derivative transaction, uh, again the PNL and all of those aspects. So we are really keen on on having that that idea that traceability, meaning that each individual um, item along the transaction journey from an entry to position to a to a, a conditional order to a hedge to a, an operation and then to a payment has its own unique reference number and i know francisco i'm asking you this knowing that you started out your career in audit uh, and so i presumably you you pay a lot of attention to this or your team, right, to traceability issues in general. Is that correct? That's correct. I mean, traceability, right, and control is key. So you even talk about treasury, you know, a lot of it cash. So we're also trying to prevent fraud and type of things. But when you talk mm -hmm. about, I think what you guys are talking about centralization is really important, right? Um, for, for two things. Um, one is, is cost efficiencies, right? But as you look, in traceability, we talk about, talking about the payment, right? I'll go one step behind because when you talk about a centralized solution a lot of it resides with no the information right that extracted from ERPs and the, the first step in this this whole process and that's something that we we are facing now the challenge is no we have many different ERPs is no is the data that your accounting team is feeding to the system is correct right so you should be able to have the trace of it know where you're sourcing the data first to identify that exposure right and uh, aggregating that correctly before you move up the chain because well, you, you may do a hedge based on information that you have, but if that information is bad, right, you're going to be off. Um, and you should be able to trace, trace back to explain and understand what went wrong, right? And traceability, not just know where did it, the, the information started from, when that you know, that invoice or that you know, liability assets was put into your balance sheet. Um, so you, you know where it's coming from and you understand what's driving, right? So it's going to help you to have better data to hedge your role. Is also going to help you to understand you know, your trends, like because if you have a clean data, you can project it out and, and become effective. So I think centralization technology to treasury is key. Um, I think you get a more and more pressure to become more efficient and more more streamlined, right? And, and I told my team, I told you no, know, my the treasurer Frankus Rand, who who I partner with, say you no, know, hey, if, if you want to succeed, right? we have to rely on technology, right? We, we have a very large and complex organization with many ERPs, uh, you know, manpower alone is not gonna solve this. And that's what I have been focused across the organization is technology. And technology means, you know, centralization solution, like you're mentioning, it is looking at our ERPs, is the data correct? Do we have the right process? So it's process, people, and performance. I think those are the three pieces that we need to look at. To talk about technology, people tend to use a software machine, but really technology has the broader concept of people performance and, and, and processes. Right. Now you mentioned the complexity and of course you are the assistant treasurer at Ingalls or Rand, a very, I imagine, uh, so complex um, so operation with sales in lots of countries. And is there not a, a like a, a paradox of complexity in the sense that when you go from a domestic exporter to a, a consolidated group with uh, with um, foreign representatives and then a consolidated group with foreign production units. All of this becomes so much more complex that you need to simplify, right? And and you have a perhaps more of a focus on 
managing net exposures, right? Uh, as opposed to, to to managing the exposure in each individual transaction. Would you agree with that? I agree. Yeah, it has to be net exposure, right? That's important for you to source all the data and to be able to centralize and consolidate. That's why centralization becomes important, right? Because you have to look at net exposure, right? If I do in the individual transactions, I may be creating a problem or increasing the problems right there, right? And, and creating more costs. Right, because if I have an entity, as you said, you know, in the Netherlands, right, that may be long dollars and I have an entity in Brazil that's short dollars, right, I don't need to hedge if they offset each other, right? So I can I can build the fish of skills. So you should, yes, with a large organization become complexities, right, but also becomes those efficiencies of skills that you can leverage if you know how to do it. And that's what every treasury team should be aiming to do it. Right. Uh, Francisco, let's uh, briefly uh, talk here about a little bit of the some of those technology solutions that we see emerging in the in the treasury landscape we at cantox are in, incredibly uh, so fond of application programming interfaces or apis right that you use in in so many uh, different uh, contexts so for example in 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 pricing in allowing uh, just as you mentioned right these those your erp to uh, say to communicate with say a, a multi-dealer trading platform or with a treasury management system or even in 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 travel with what we call booking engines so uh, we really think that application programming interfaces or apis are really the the most uh, say uh, salient of their applic uh, technology application in treasury operations what is your view or do you keep a, an eye on on those trends in general we do. I, 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 I particularly do. I, I tend to like technology by nature. <laughs> uh, so I, I try and I, I like and I push my team. To, we have to be the best at what we do, right? I think that's the nature to help people to grow and develop, which are, are not important aspects that I, I normally talk about. Uh, but I keep a trend out because I think there's an opportunity for us to do something better with less, right? It's always raising that bar. Right. But, uh, I want us to be aware. I want us to be the forefront. And I, I tell our banking partners many of the time, say, hey, if you're a pilot in a program, no, reach out to me. I would like to be participate with you. It's an opportunity for us to do something better. It's an opportunity for someone within the team to learn something new, right, and, and tr try to develop their skills. Um, and, and also, right, I think sometimes when people have a program in API and there's something very specific, they tend to do better than those very generic programs. So I think it's always good for people trying to be you know market disruptor and I, I i always try to engage and listen with them to see you know does it make sense or can i contribute to that solution that's right well look we um i think we've uh, touched on a lot of topics here uh, we uh, started out by by mentioning the issues related to the cost of capital and how uh treasury operations allow uh, well in 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 the particular case right here to to um to Make a contribution, a positive contribution to farm valuation, reducing the cost of capital, and of course, liquidity management here. So Francisco Barros is very keen on that point, and and so we're really uh, thankful for that. And we went also to um, a, a discussion on centralization and technology. So Francisco, I really appreciate your participation today on Currency Cast, and. Well, um, um, for me, it's uh, thank you again, and I'll see you next time. All right, well, thanks, Agustin. I'm very happy to be here. Always happy to engage in this discussion and help to contribute you know, in the industry and share, share, share information and knowledge. So thanks for having me on, on the show, and you know, happy to connect again in the future if you guys want to discuss any other topics. All right, goodbye. Thank you. Bye-bye.